the implication of the resurrection. Do you know, I submit to you that the average believer is totally unaware of the significance of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. We know instinctively that the resurrection seemed to connote victory, but the details as to what it captures and how it matters to my life and your life today, many have not been attentive to study and respectfully speaking, many preachers have not even paid attention to it. You know, listen, in the kingdom, not every truth carries the same value. Are we together now? Yes. Every truth is valuable, but not every truth carries the same value. There is a value component attached to every body of knowledge. And there are stresses and things that the spirit would emphasize. The same way you prepare a meal. The quantity of rice you put in the pot is not the same quantity of salt you put in the pot. However, both of them are needed. When you fetch a measure of rice and a measure of salt, you are not cooking again. You are killing. <laughs> Am I right on that? And so just because you found truth. You will be surprised that the value of the light you have brought together does not add up to much because in your pursuit you ignore pillars believe what you are hearing it is true hmm. our fathers and those who have joined the cloud of witnesses today in truth there were certain things they did not know either because they were not educated or they did not have the privilege of secular enlightenment but among the many things they knew they majored on the majors and from the frailty of their understanding the worth of what they knew commanded tremendous power now we are a generation of knowledge vast knowledge but in our pursuit we have run away from the fundamentals and so we are ever learning the bible says but never come in into the knowledge of the truth so the corresponding authority that should justify our pursuit for knowledge is not there and so the average believer including the preachers are frustrated how can i know so much and yet the sick are not healed in experience how can i know so much there is hardly any scripture you will open that believers will say wow i've never seen it they will only say i've never seen it in this fashion are we together there is abundance of knowledge. The average church goer is not in ignorance. Perhaps the problem may be accuracy of understanding, but not ignorance. And yet with all of this, the proof, listen, results matter in this kingdom. Perhaps let me take a minute to emphasize it. Never downplay results. Result is how God is glorified. Ephesians 2 and verse 10 says, we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus, watch this, unto good works, which God before ordained that we should walk in them. Ephesians 3 and verse 10 says, now unto principalities and powers in heavenly places might be made known by the church the manifold wisdom of God. Are we learning? John 15 and verse 8 herein is our father glorified if you truly desire to see jesus glorified he says when ye bear much fruit so shall you be my disciples john 15 16 you have not chosen me but i have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain when Jesus saw a tree that was taken from the earth and did not produce result, as compassionate as he was, he did not pity it. He cursed it. Your result is important for the revelation of Jesus. It gives evidence. It gives validation to the fact that he did not lie. Let's walk for a few minutes. What are the implications of the resurrection? And hear me, ladies and gentlemen, in addition to all you have heard, as you are listening to this, I believe that the power of God will rest upon these words and begin to quicken everything that is dead or dying in our lives. Because the Bible says, while Peter yet spake these things, he says the Holy Ghost fell not on all them in the auditorium, on all them that heard it. Hallelujah. Number one, the first implication of the resurrection, according to scripture, is that the resurrection was a validation that Jesus was truly the son of God. Romans chapter 1. Please give us 2 to 4. 
the first implication of the resurrection was that it came as a validation that Jesus was truly the son of God. Romans chapter 1, 2 to 4, which he promised before by his prophets in the Holy Scripture. Verse 3, concerning his son Jesus Christ, our Lord, which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh. Please read the next verse together. Ready? One to read. And declared to be the son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness. How? By the resurrection. By his resurrection from the dead, it was a validation indeed that he was a son of God. If Jesus Christ did not resurrect from the dead, there would be no basis for believing in truth. Because I hope you know that Jesus was not the first person who claimed divinity. Read your Bible. There had been many, many sects before that time. Men and women who claimed to be connected to the divine. Jesus had to resurrect as proof. My God, every other religion, with all due respect and their founders, have graves with bones in it. There is only one grave that is empty. One. One grave. That you will get there and see the grave, but you will not find the bones. He is not here. He is risen. Seated at the right hand of God the Father. The resurrection validated that Jesus was truly the son of God. I hope you know that Christianity began with the resurrection. Hallelujah. Truly, only the Christian faith has an empty tomb. If there are other empty tombs, the bodies were stolen or relocated archaeologically. But this one, he resurrected and there were unbelievers who witnessed it. The angel came and rolled the stone and sat on it. Let me see who will take me from that stone. And the Bible says the son of the living God resurrected triumphantly. He was not in a rush. He came out triumphantly. Number two, what is the second implication of the resurrection? Are you ready? The resurrection gave credibility to all other words that Jesus spoke. I hope you know Jesus himself prophesied about his death, his burial, his resurrection. If that did not happen, there's no basis for trusting any other thing he said. The resurrection gave credibility to all other words that Jesus spoke. Matthew 17, 5 to 9. Let's hurry up. Matthew chapter 17, 5 to 9. While he yet spake, behold, a bright cloud, this was at the transfiguration, overshadowed them and behold a voice out of the cloud which said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. Next verse. The Bible says, and when the disciples heard it, they fell on their face and were so afraid. Uh -huh. And Jesus came and touched them and said, arise, be not afraid. Reading to verse 9. And when he had, they had lifted up their eyes, they saw no one except Jesus only. Uh -huh. And as they came down from the mountain, watch this. Jesus charged them saying, tell the vision to no man until the son of man is risen from the dead. Don't go around telling anybody if I don't resurrect. So today we have the audacity to tell everyone as proof that he rose. He said, tell no man until resurrection happens. Because if resurrection did not happen, your evangelism is useless. The basis of your confidence is that it truly happened. Implication number two. So if Jesus said, I will resurrect and he did, it then means if he tells you, watch this now, that you are light and salt, you can believe him. If he tells you, I am resurrection and life, because he proved it by resurrecting, he proved by his resurrection that indeed he is faithful and true. The Bible calls him full of grace and truth. No guile, no deception. It is based on the awareness of the resurrection. I can place my trust in every other thing he has said. My goodness. What else has he said concerning you? 
have you checked recently to see what he said concerning you that i am the light of the world i am a city that is set on a hill that cannot be hidden the logos of god every truth i find in scripture i believe it when men say there is a casting down for me i say there is a lifting up because the one who is responsible for that is faithful and true while we look not at the things that are seen but the things that are unseen for the things that are seen are temporal and the things that are unseen are eternal i can believe god for anything he tells me whether it makes sense or not every time doubt comes remember the resurrection every time fear comes remember the resurrection if the grave listen the truth died but it only died for three days any good thing that dies in your life cannot be buried it will resurrect back again king of kings lord of lords faithful and true lamb of god we worship you king of kings lord of lords faithful and true lamb of god we worship you listen ladies and gentlemen if you do not believe the resurrection you will not have the faith to believe any other thing he tells you so god can tell you today that though your beginning be small that your latter end shall greatly increase and when the devil wants to sell you doubt you remember where was he when the grave was opened where was he when the son of the living god came out from hades where was he when the saints he came as the first fruit of those who had resurrected he was not meant to be the only one are we together listen believers let's stop being superstitious and become spiritual spirituality is based on the truthfulness of scripture are we together yes don't place your faith on superstition your audacity is based on the truth of what he said now that he's resurrected i will now believe when he says all power authority and power has been given unto you go ye so i go with that audacity knowing that god cannot lie not that he does not lie he cannot lie a lie does not mean an untrue statement a lie a lie is anything you do not have the wherewithal to defend when you make a statement that you do not have the capacity to bring to pass you lied so when the bible says god cannot lie it means there is an ability within him that insists that all he says comes to pass the resurrection can i tell you many believers will not be able to do much for god in this generation because we truly do not believe the words of jesus we hope we believe we think we believe but in experience we do not believe if i ask you come and collect five million now you will look at me and sign me and say it is well hallelujah all those statements are proof that you are not yet sure but if one of the wealthy people that have been accredited as a billionaire stands here and said out of compassion come and collect 20 million even if you didn't hear well you will first come and say at least i'm here the laxity to act is proof we are not sure hmm. no we are not sure we are not sure the character of the spirit of faith is that it is predicated on the soundness of understanding it's not about a blind bold face no do you believe the words of Jesus? The resurrection gives you the basis, the ultimate basis that Jesus is believable. My God, what else has he said concerning you? That should be your next assignment. To find it and to believe it. And said the one who spoke is the resurrection and the life. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. And if death has been destroyed, you see that now? I believe him for anything. Listen, the fathers by the grace of God who have done exploits in this kingdom were men who truly believed that God was not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man to repent. The implication number two. Are we learning? Number three. What is the third implication? 
of the resurrection are you ready the resurrection is the central theme of the gospel of salvation the resurrection of the lord jesus christ is the central theme of the gospel of salvation first corinthians 15 17 please in all your preaching if you omit the resurrection you are preaching another faith in all your teaching in all your communication of the gospel you cannot omit the resurrection because the strength of the christian experience lies in the validity of the resurrection please read with me and if christ be not raised it says your faith is in vain are we together and ye are still in your sin hmm. romans chapter 10 i like this from verse 9 and 10 the bible says this is the formula for the administration of new life to the be anyone who wants to believe that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the lordship of jesus and believe in your heart that god raised him from the dead did you hear that not just believe that the grave opened you must believe that god raised him from the dead then thou shalt be saved the next verse says for with the heart man believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation you must believe that god raised him from the dead he's alive he's alive when you pray to a god who's who's who you are not sure whether or not he's dead or alive is the reason why many people's prayer life is largely a dissipation of energy without conviction they are not even sure if the one they are praying to hears them hmm. hallelujah the centrality of the gospel of salvation is hinged on the resurrection second timothy chapter 2 and verse 8 second timothy chapter 2 and verse 8 have this revelation and watch your life change and shift from level to level the bible says remember that jesus christ of the seed of david was raised from the dead according to my gospel raised from the dead can i give you number four very quickly the fourth implication of the resurrection the first being that the resurrection was a validation that jesus was truly the son of god second that the resurrection gave credibility to every other word that jesus spoke now we can believe the truth inspired by the word number three the resurrection is the centrality of the gospel of salvation number four the resurrection established the victory of christ write it down please the resurrection established the victory of christ over sin satan death and the grave it was not over satan alone the resurrection established victory over sin satan death and the grave please take it down for me same power that conquered the grave lives in me lives in me your love that rescued the earth lives in me lives in me hey. same power that conquered the grave lives in me lives in me your love that rescued the earth lives in me lives in me resurrection establishing victory over sin dominion over sin dominion over satan dominion over death dominion over the grave the one who will reign in life is the one who understands the implication of dominion across these four dimensions dominion over sin dominion over satan dominion listen if the only thing you have dominion over is sin you are still not free because jesus was sinless and yet satan came to him i hope you know he was sinless before he became sin <laughs> but there were other things he had to deal with outside of sin satan 
the grave, death. Same power that conquered the grave lives in me. Lives in me. Let this enter as a revelation. Your love that rescued the earth lives in me. Lives in me. When you stand before someone sitting on a wheelchair, it does not make sense to look at someone. There are no, the, the, the medical report is there to tell you this person will never stand again. But then you remember that body was bound and thrown for three days. But the same way he arose, every situation in life that is antichrist can be traced to the cooperation of these four elements. Sin, Satan, the grave. Listen, let me share with you a powerful secret if you want to walk in miracles. Every situation you see that does not reflect the character of Christ only happens because these four elements find expression within it. Sin, Satan, the grave. Are we together? And then death. And there was the rider upon the fourth horse. A pale horse having a pair of balances and he said his name is death death is also a spirit not a phenomenon is a spirit that one day will be tamed and can now be tamed by understanding the awareness that death is just a random phenomenon that cannot be explained is not accurate there is the spirit of death that kills like every other spirit they depend on fear to open the door for them. Spirits are helpless except fear opens the door. If fear does not open the door, spirits cannot precede fear. And to deliver them who through fear have all their lifetime been subject to bondage. Is someone learning? Hmm. So when you look at any life that does not reflect the glory and the character of the Christ, you are seeing the operation of sin, who seen that this man was born blind? Go and sin no more. Or you are seeing an operation of Satan himself as a thief. John 10, 10. That the thief cometh not, but for to steal, to kill and to destroy. You can use his tripartite signature in any life. And no, Satan has visited this family. The cure is the consciousness of the resurrection power. Listen, when Jesus rose from the dead, rose from the grave, it established victory over sin, victory over Satan, victory over the grave, and victory over death. Hmm. Hallelujah. Do you believe this? Let me give us one more. Number five. What is the implication of the resurrection? Now watch this. The resurrection today, or perhaps I'll give us two more. The resurrection has allowed anyone who believes in Jesus to be a partaker of his life and his victory. This one is the one that excites my spirit. I hope you know that everything Jesus did was not just for himself, nor the father. It was as proof of his love for man. I told you in the morning that the victory that was later credited to Jesus was always his own, but it was his own alone. This is why he relinquished it and came to start again because he wanted to incorporate man in that victory. And the only way to incorporate it, you imagine someone who goes to school and have a PhD for want of expression, but because the PhD is for him alone, then he reverses the process and starts his education again but signs a hidden contract that everything i'm now getting is not for me alone it's for me and everyone who believes me are we together now by the time he backs phd they suddenly call you from the bush and give you a certificate with phd and he said this is not right and he says well i always had phd but i'm i'm not interested in it being alone so he relinquished his godhead and came back and won that same victory but this time around it was not him alone hmm. do you understand this now this is very profound 
He was always God. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. The earth is the Lord's. The fullness there of the world. And they that dwell therein. So why did he have to come and die? Why did he have to go through all of this? To limit himself and sound very frail and helpless. To the point that Pontius Pilate said, I have power to set you free. He said, no, you cannot have power over me except it is given to you. It is within my power to call a legion of angels. I am submitting myself not because of limitation. There is man. What is man that thou art mindful of? Not the son of man. What kind of vulnerability do you exhibit this way? What is it about man that you are willing to relinquish your being God to walk upon the earth starting as a baby? Growing as a teenager, submitting to your own creation so that now you will be seated together with that man. Listen, the most powerful part of resurrection was not what Jesus did, was who he did it for. Hmm. Let me repeat myself again. The most powerful part of the resurrection story was not what Jesus did. Don't downplay that, but who he did it for. This is what makes us more than conquerors hallelujah are we together this is powerful my god i am a partaker of his divine nature say that after me one more time i'm a partaker of his divine nature yes sir the bible says in first corinthians chapter 15 please let's hurry up 56 and 57 then we'll go to ephesians chapter 1 now, that book, Ephesians chapter 1, is a mystery that I'm praying God will grant us grace to settle and study. Contained within Ephesians 1 and 2 is a deep mystery that controls spiritual power. But let's look at this. The sting of death is sin. And the strength of sin is the law. 57. But thanks be to God, on account of this, which giveth us, say giveth us. It is not something you earn. You see, this is where the balance of self-righteousness and believing that we earn a status in the spirit just on account of the things we do. No. Our fastings and our prayer, watch this now, and all the spiritual activities we engage in, they are only participatory conditions to make good what has been finished in Christ. But it has never been and will never be the basis for the release of power. This is what the fathers knew that our generation has lost. Because there seems to be an accreditation you receive when people see that you are dissipating energy and trying. This is not of the flesh, ladies and gentlemen. Jesus fasted. Don't get me wrong. Jesus prayed. There are spiritual activities that build a man's spirit. But when you watch men like Reinhard Bonke, T.L. Osborne, they got to those crusade grounds not with the consciousness of their righteousness. Their entirety was centered on them being partakers. They were obsessed with the revelation of their oneness with Christ. They spoke as men who understood they were one with Christ. We stand a risk of getting into legalism that will lead to powerlessness and frustration if we remove Jesus Christ out of the equation of our growth and begin to labor by ourselves. There were people who tried it before us. At least we can learn from the prophets of Baal. There is no sacrifice any believer has made that is greater than what the prophets of Baal did. I mean, for those guys to be crying from morning till night, then to lacerate themselves, it was not persecution. It was their act of yieldedness. What yieldedness is greater than that? And Elijah said, this is not how it is done. Come, let me show you. The first thing was he restored the altar of the Lord. You see that there was sacrifice as part of it. So I'm not negating sacrifice, but the basis was not the sacrifice the basis was not just the fire. It was an ordinance he fulfilled. Because even after the sacrifice, the fire still did not fall. So what really brought the fire? And he looked unto heaven. And fire fell. And consumed everything. Hallelujah. Those who know God. Understand that nothing of yourself truly in experience can bring you to a point of stature where you represent the purposes of God, not in the flesh. Now, 
those who have seen God move across their generations are people who with the simplicity of childlike faith have come into a thorough understanding of the fact that his resurrection power, the consciousness of the victory that he wrought. I hope you know it was not Jesus and someone else that defeated Satan. No. The assistance of men stopped when he got to the cross. From the cross, no man helped him again. They helped him to get there. Simon of Cyrene helped him to carry the cross. But the moment he got there, it was a lonely journey. And only the second Adam went down to Hades. And the cohorts of hell were upon him, the Bible says. And the Bible says he shook, he made a public display of them. And he went himself to Satan. Give me the keys that Adam gave you. He collected the keys. Alpha, Omega. That is not a name. It's a title that was end. Alpha and Omega does not just mean beginning and the end. Who ended it? Who began it? That is why no, God does not share that name with man. No. You are not a partaker of that name. You are not Alpha. You are not Omega. No. There are names he shares with men. Light. Salt. He is light. You are light. But not Alpha and Omega. Because it was not a gift. It was end. Are we together now? Those are the names that brand him in a class all by himself. My God. Partakers of his divine nature, according as his divine power, have given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. Watch this. Through the knowledge of him. Is that true? Who has called us into glory and virtue. The Bible says, whereby are given to us great and exceeding precious promises that by them we might be partakers of his divine nature haven't escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust i'm a partaker of his divine nature i may not look like it but it's a spiritual reality my oneness with christ giving me the basis so now when you meet satan ask him the list has increased jesus i know paul i know he will not stop there joshua selman i know now listen, I hope you know that it's not a status that was end. No, it's a revelation that enlisted you there. The sons of Sceva did not know this. They went in the strength of the flesh and the demons taught them that it doesn't work that way. Hello, Madonna. Hey. Madonna, hello, Madonna, hello. We don't have the time, but let me give you this as an assignment. Read the entire Ephesians chapter one, the whole twenty-three verses. Focus from verse. Maybe let's look at verse one to eight. Then we we'll look at eleven. We don't have all the time, but it's important for you to understand this. The revelation of what happened. Now, let me say this. I hope you know that Jesus himself said, I have many things to tell you, but ye cannot bear them now. Are we in agreement on that? There were many things Jesus taught the apostles, but there were other things he did not teach them. But he said they needed to know it for their holistic development. It was the man, Paul, who came and became a continuation of those things by the Spirit. Imagine the Gospels without the Pauline epistles. There are things about God you would never know. It was not Jesus that taught us our positional advantage. It was not Jesus that taught us the implication of our oneness. You see, the Gospels are the foundation. Eyewitness accounts. But the Pauline epistles give revelation as to the reality of the believer's status today on account of what Christ has done. Please give it to us. Ephesians 1. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, to the saints which are at Ephesus and to the faithful in Christ Jesus. Grace unto you and peace from God our Father and our Lord. All right, let's go. Blessed be God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, household of David, who had blessed me, had blessed us with how many? All spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Verse 4. According as he has chosen us in him 
before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love verse 5 having predestinated us unto adoption of children by jesus to himself according to the good pleasure of his will keep reading it says to the praise of the glory of his grace wherein he had made us accepted in the beloved in whom we have redemption through his blood the forgiveness of sin according to the riches of his grace uh-huh wherein he had abound towards us in all wisdom and prudence now jump to verse 11 for sake of time in whom we also have obtained an inheritance being predestined according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his will we have obtained an inheritance you read that right to 23 it was on account of this that paul said i paul on account of this i bow my knees to our lord jesus christ from verse 16 that the lord himself will grant you access to the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him he says the eyes of your understanding being flooded with light enlightened that you may know number one the hope of his calling number two the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints number three the exceeding greatness of his power to us world who believe according to the working of his mighty power when did that happen which he wrought in christ when he raised him from the dead there was power that was exerted and paul is saying i am praying that you will understand the extent of power that took jesus from hades brought him back to earth took him to heaven and kept him there because if you have that understanding it will take you from anywhere to anywhere the same power that took jesus from the grave and placed him in a position of authority can take any man from the village and place you to the nations the same power the same power that is the power that turns weak men to strong men that is the power that gives men a testimony in their generation that is the power that gives men a voice even though they do not come with any advantage the resurrection power it is called ah fear not oh warm jacob an ability of the spirit is able to rest upon you on account of resurrection that can transit an ordinary man in ministry in business you have this consciousness you know you are not ordinary and you are not just speaking pentecostal gibberish this is a reality sealed by god's integrity that you cannot be ordinary partakers of his divine nature this is a revelation that i found and still continue to press into it by grace when we come into an awareness of the extent of our oneness resurrection has brought me into that position everything that christ purchased and received in redemption was for me he's brought me to be a partaker of it whether i will walk in the reality of it in my lifetime or not depends on my willingness and my understanding but to know this for a fact that no believer ordained by god is ordained to a life of weakness and limitation and i believe that there is a generation that will press into this it, it, it may start slowly like the rain coming you see it will start trickling one by one and there are mockers who will laugh at our zeal but gradually energized by the spirit and the sincerity of our pursuit one day we will enter a reality that would demonstrate god to this generation in a way that has not been seen god is raising mighty men in this place God is raising people of fire in this place. And he won't stop, he won't stop till you look just like him. He won't stop, no, he won't stop till my life looks like him. He won't stop, he won't stop till I look just like him. He won't stop, he won't stop 
till my life looks like him listen you may not know what is happening to you in this conference until you step out of that place you will look at someone and say god bless you it's only that it will not sound the way it sounded before again there is an understanding that has strengthened you by that simple pronouncement god bless you you will swing open the two lift gates of men's destiny they will return back and say what happened and you will tell them this is the power of light that the light shineth in darkness the duration of darkness does not affect the strength of light once it shows up that is the end of darkness hallelujah no matter how dark it has been but the people that sat in darkness have seen a great light he said he made two great lights one to rule in the day and the other to rule in the night listen i want you to have be obsessed with the revelation the consciousness of your oneness with christ whilst you are sitting i want you to see yourself that when he hung upon that cross i told you in the morning there were two people on that cross i'm not talking of the two thieves i'm talking of me and him hmm. when he resurrected it was not only him i was raised up with him when he was exalted your bible says we are seated with him now you can choose to believe it or not seated with him and that is the position of dominion the lord said to my lord sit down at my right hand that means anybody who is seated at the right hand your enemies must become your footstool Do you believe this? Yes, sir. By your spirit I will rise From the ashes of defeat The resurrected king Is resurrecting me In your name I come alive To declare your victory The resurrected king Say, I am one with Christ. Please shout it. Say, I am one with Christ. I am one with Christ. Exalted with Christ. Yes, sir. It's a mentality. It's a consciousness you must carry. Regardless your background. Regardless the bills. Regardless the reality. God does not listen. Listen. A weak mentality cannot take nations for Jesus. No. A defeated mentality will be a liability to the kingdom. You will waste the investment of the kingdom in your life if you do not contend for transformation. It says, let this mind be in you. Do you know that Jesus never talked about where he came from? Read your Bible. Jesus did not have time discussing where he came from or the limitations connected to that place. When Nathaniel said, can anything good come out of Nazareth? He said, no, 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 don't insult Nathaniel. He's not wrong. Except that because the last thing that came out of Nazareth, Samson, he didn't last. Nazarenes did not have longevity of impact. Something will bring them down. And Nathaniel said, let's not waste our time following a man who will not last. And he said, he's a sincere man. An Israelite indeed in whom there is no guile. He's speaking out of sincerity. Except that this Nazarene who has come is different. And while it is true that he spent only 33 years and a half, my goodness, he replicated himself in many. Today he has brought many sons into glory by adoption. The mystery of adoption. We have become extensions of his possibilities here and now. Our challenge now is to contend for light and understanding and to receive an engracing of the spirit that empowers us to represent him as witnesses. A witness is a false witness until he has an evidence an evidence is a token of truthfulness it brings an end to all arguments the kingdom experience was never supposed to be heard alone it was supposed to be heard and seen please say heard and seen you don't just hear that God is good. You see that he is good. You don't just hear that he can save. You will see that he can save. Our generation is tired of hearing what God can do. 
here comes the emergence of men through enlightenment that will be demonstrators and validators of the speakings of god Acts chapter 8 from verse 5 philip went down to samaria the bible says and preached christ unto them verse 6 says the people gave heed with one accord to the things that philip spake hearing and seeing the miracles that he did not just hearing we have heard that god can change a man's life we have heard that god can change ss to aa we can hear that god can give an innocent child who was not there when his parents met to bring him he can give him a chance to live a responsible life if you say god is love don't just say it show it the manifestation of healing is beyond saying a man is powerful it is a letter from heaven to men god is love there needs to be a restoration of proof genuine proof that dumbfounds principalities and powers and ladies and gentlemen in a bit of my study about revivals and i can tell you with all humility i've studied a bit about the move of god i don't know anything we're all students i don't know everything we're learning but the bits that i've found every man who came into an understanding of the victory of christ alongside the consciousness of their oneness and their positional advantage they live like gods upon the earth there are children who misbehave without fear because of the consciousness of the kind of parents they have you are angry at their misbehavior yet you are limited by the status of their parents and they are aware so they keep misbehaving are we together huh. something happens to the believer when you are conscious of the spiritual heritage this is true many demons and many spirits in the realm of the spirit by the privilege of what i do i have seen attacks i have seen the arsenals of darkness but i have seen the victory that can be wrought in christ <laughs> ladies and gentlemen do not mistake in this generation for noisemakers it is not noise our audacity is not anything derived from ourselves it is a call and a passion from the spirit because God is insisting on this generation that we will reveal from Nigeria and Africa to the globe a portrait of true apostolic Christianity. It is true. We may not be able to import technology yet. We cannot boast of that. We may not be able to boast of as much intellectual prowess from a global standpoint. But there is one inheritance we have. The reality of the spirit life. And we will sell it to the nations and reveal Jesus in a way that has not been seen again. History books should not close. Remove the full stop. There is a generation continuing that story. <laughs> Remove the full stop. If you came here for this conference tonight, I want you to know that you did not just come. It's a solemn assembly. It's a clarion call from the spirit. It's a sign that there is a place for you in this prophetic program. When I sat back there, all through the ministration, you saw me just sitting quietly. These were the contemplations in my heart. Every day, I keep seeing the formation is happening. Yes. After four months come the harvest. It may not look like it, but from Lagos to Abuja to Jos to Ghana, we are beginning to see the formation. There is a spirit driving that formation that cannot be stopped by any man. No, I will build my church. Some of you are here. The quickening of the spirit is what brought you here. And whilst you are seated, very shortly in a few minutes, we are going to allow that wind. There is a quickening. There is a quickening. Listen. There is a place and a portion for you in destiny. Let me say something that may bless you. Every name you see in the Bible is not just the name of a believer. The names you see recorded in the Bible are spiritual pathways 
that produce certain kinds of believers that make up this army did you hear what i just said so when you say abraham abraham is not just the name of a man abraham is the name given to a certain spiritual pathway that if followed will produce a certain kind of warrior esther is not just the name of a woman who married a king esther is a description of a way the holy spirit can produce champions out of men one of the ways you know that it is god who is training you is that you will find a parallel to what you are becoming in scripture so you can begin your work with god and later find out that esther is becoming even though your name may be yemisi but in the training of the spirit you are finding out that esther is evolving from that training abraham is evolving from that training you see that now elijah is evolving from that training peter the training of elijah is not the training of esther but it's still the same god training them we are not doing a pastor's conference here but let me teach you this one of your first assignment is to discern where god is taking you so that you know where to submit yourself for training because if elijah mentors esther esther will be called elijah not esther are we together now it matters who midwives you're becoming just because i am spiritual does not mean i can raise every army to go. no 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 there is an allocation given to me based on the election of grace of the kind of people i can train if i insist on training joseph i may produce someone else who may not be a king in egypt Let's leave this one for, I'm sure maybe another a pastor's call. But this night, our assignment is to contend to come into the fullness of that resurrection power. The reason why Ruth became Ruth was because of the counsel and the mentorship that came from Naomi. The pain of Naomi was part of the, the, the dimension she got the wisdom to advise Ruth. You cannot train root until you have lost to a certain degree. There is a level of compassion that only comes. I hope you know that not every pain is a loss. There is something in the spirit called the gift of pain. Now, most believers will not want to hear this. This teaching you are hearing is not for babes. There is a dimension of pain that comes to you as a gift from God. <laughs> We'll find somewhere to pray an angel comes to meet a young virgin and she says you are highly favored go and read your bible show me anything dear that looks like our description of favor and then highly on top of it you show me what about mary's life and johnny demonstrates favor she didn't even write any book and at the end she had to submit on the day of pentecost as if she was not his mother no extra privilege was given she had to join them with humility to be filled with the holy ghost so what is the favor about you will understand another side of favor when you get to heaven you see you will know that what we call scars are blessings in the spirit so the bible says i reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed a day will come what looks like a tragic situation for household of david it will become the tray upon which your trophy will rest on listen there is a clarion call that can be made in destiny and only men who have pain and a certain scar will file up if you are too innocent and void of certain scars, you cannot mentor a generation. You will be too innocent and you will not be able to... Help those under the anointing. I see a wind just moving right now. This is what I see. Wind blowing. Can I tell you? Huh. Jesus did not just die. He was pierced across many places. 
and the blood that flowed from him flowed through the pain it was not only the blood that flowed there are many other things that flow from it I'm digressing by the spirit to tell someone everything that has happened in your life that looks like a disappointment there is a track record in the spirit you are building this is the reason why when we do not understand God we say God is greater though he slay me why did my loved one die though he slay me why did I lose out in the business how are you preparing for a conference that is so spiritual with prayer investments and within two hours it is so gutted by fire where were the angels that keep watch over the saints it is only foolish people that think like that in the economy of heaven the way testimonies are built is like the way food is prepared you don't carry a whole yam from the farm and throw it in the pot you slice it if you see someone slicing chicken and yam it does not look pleasant keep being patient <laughs> ah shalima sabraka paratos listen let me show you what i just said we're a generation that is obsessed about proof philippians 3 and verse 10 i just sense in my spirit we're going to pray honestly i still see this wind blowing there are people who came here there is a portion for you in prophecy and there are mantles mantles graces you may be ordinary finally that grace finds you and turns you into a mighty warrior let's read together that i may know him what do i need to know about him number one the power of his resurrection number two hold on hold on he did not say his suffering he said the fellowship what is the fellowship of his suffering the sharing it is a there is a kind of honor that god gives men by allah oh dear it's called the fellowship of his suffering there are seven crowns that will be given to the saints in revelation one of it is called the matthias crown not everyone gets that not every believer gets that the matthias crown is a testimony of their resilience hebrews 11 the bible says others died rejecting an opportunity to be delivered because they look forward to a better resurrection Let me give you the last one. What is the sixth implication of his resurrection? The resurrection gives every believer in Christ hope beyond death, hope beyond the grave. The resurrection, the resurrection, you lost your mother and the spirit of God is telling me to tell you this sixth point is for you. This is what I'm hearing in my spirit. Your mother went to be with the Lord. A woman who loved God and was a woman of prayer. And since she died, you have been crying, you have been wounded. The Lord is saying, I should tell you, this is the answer to the prayer. That the consciousness of the resurrection, watch this now. It gives every believer in Christ hope beyond death. Hope beyond the grave. Hope beyond death. Can, can I tell you? when we press for long life it's not because of the fear of death it's to give us an opportunity to serve the purposes of god long enough but whether in life or death we have assumed a status that is always victorious hope beyond the grave <laughs> though our outward man perish the inward man is renewed it is the reason why we spend our lives and we are spent for him listen I come from the north and there is an indoctrination that is given to ex especially extremist sects the moment you recruit them it is not their assignment to teach them it is the worth of spending yourself and being spent 
it becomes a joy the moment the first assignment that produces terrorists is to let them see that death is profitable not killing their own death so the first assignment is to indoctrinate them to come to a point where they are comfortable and look forward to it and a man who does not fear death is a dangerous man are we together yeah so a man will look at you to your face and while you are talking you don't know me i will call my father and he said you are nonsense i'm already a dead man you are speaking rubbish <laughs> an army stands with a gun and say you will die and they laugh while they are blowing them up they have no fear of it the resurrection power teaches us that the frame of our living is not confined to the three-dimensional realm here's how the apostle puts it for me to live is christ and then he says to die how do you call death gain why have you been calling it loss the one you prayed for and you say recover from cancer i declare the healing power of jesus let it come upon you when the person died you say god why yet you call death gain do you cry when you gain talk to me every businessman looks forward to gain profit is the is largely the intent behind the business mm. someday one glorious morning maybe while some of us are on crusade grounds and all of us are having conferences like this there will be a massive activity upon the earth in a moment the bible says in the twinkling of an eye the only thing that will be left is this bible produced by zondervan will be gone then we will have the privilege to be joined we will see men who we read about <laughs> i will see my grandfather who labored for the gospel till he died we will have the privilege of seeing people today and there will be a glorious reunion thanks to the resurrection we live our lives void of fear because we already know the end of all things it is not a call to careless living no we have a responsibility to contend for longevity to give this body the time to host our spirits while we serve god but that at the back of it the believer is all way in advantage did you hear what i'm saying this is very important most christians don't want to hear what i just said now you say no 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 rather reject it i will reject it but behind in the next 10 20 years there will be a transition in the church in africa it's true if christ tarries a time will come too they will call us fathers and whether you like it or not our children will edit what today we know and call revelation then if christ tarries one day we will stand and look at earth having conquered nations and territories spending our lives and having been spent for his majesty we will stand and with the salute of a warrior hmm. till he returns or calls me home here in the love of Christ I'll stand till he returns or calls me home it's here in the love hear me what is your response i'm wrapping up what is your response to all that you have heard today number one god is depending on you to take his resurrection power to the nations will you fail if it depends on you will you fail if it depends on you acts chapter 4 and verse 33 with great power gave the apostles witness the witness does not have to be on the pulpit the witness for some of us will be in administration will be in business when i saw the plan pastor shola you get the plan of the church and they said it was the architects in the church that came together i said these are witnesses listen I preached a message called Redefining the Coming Revival. 
The revival that is coming will not happen the way we expect. There will be many disappointments. Because our expectation in the coming revival is that Elijah is coming. It is not Elijah alone who is coming. The revival will bring Esther. The revival will bring Nehemiah. The revival will bring Ruth. The revival will bring David. Make sure you don't throw away David because you are only looking for Elijah. There will be a formation of an army distributed by the wisdom of God. Others will go to commerce and the economy. Bringing for us the wealth that funds the end time program. Are we together? We're having a discussion this time in Europe right now. A lot of Arab nations are buying the auditoriums. And they are not allowing for Christian programs again. And we don't just sit down and say, oh God, we thank you. We must trust God to bring us to a point of economic empowerment where men become like nations. Our orientation has changed. It is not carnality. It's an orientation that is derived from passion to see his kingdom come. So we are not apologetic about contending for kingdom wealth. God has purified our orientation. We understand the true purpose and value for money. So among the many blessings I'll pray for you is financial increase. If you like, receive it. If you like, don't receive it. Unapologetically, as part of the tools required for kingdom come. Hallelujah. We're preparing for a conference. And when they send the bills, minus insurance, I said, ah, God, why now? Why, why is the church like this? All this unnecessary prayer can be solved when the right witnesses in the marketplace arise. Every time God's people focus on God, Satan will manipulate the economy to distract their concentration. When Jesus was teaching, the man in power sent people to come and challenge him in the area of finances. You are teaching and yet you've not paid your task. Jesus did not say, leave me alone. He said, no. The way to find peace on earth is to give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. But if you don't have what to give to Caesar, it will interrupt your fellowship with God. Are we together? Will you serve God better if you stop paying rent and get into a house that can give you peace? You can shut down for three days. Do you think it's the will of God? Hallelujah. We are trusting God for an emergence of Esther's. Women who will, the assignment of Esther is similar to the assignment of Jezebel. Jezebel is a corruption of the Esther pattern because both Jezebel and Esther only function when they get to the palace. Jezebel is a spirit that cannot function until she sits with people in power. Her assignment is to manipulate those who control territories and domains. It's not a woman, it's a pattern. The same way Esther is beyond a woman, a little slave girl exalted by the spirit. The only warrior in the book of Esther never took a sword, yet her man died. Never took a sword, yet the purposes of God were preserved. I'm saying that because someone that is your assignment. So the masters and PhD you are getting is not a waste. It is an Esther formation. That is the disadvantage of everyone being trained by Elijah. Elijah does not have the ointment to give Esther. No. It is Haggai, the keeper of the king's virgins. He's the one who gives the oil she keeps rubbing to be accepted by Ahasuerus. Now you read your Bible from the lens of prophecy and all you will see is the blueprint of the prophetic army. So when you see a training happening somewhere beyond your scope of grace, you don't fight it. You appreciate that formation while focusing on your own. I whipped. Naomi is as valuable as, as Elijah in training Ruth and in training Elijah. The charismatism may differ but do not reject Naomi's advice. You may be corrupting the race that bets Jesus.
Hallelujah. My time is up. Let's pray. And I'll speak over your life by the privilege of God's grace. Listen. One of the things that God is restoring in the body of Christ, I didn't have time to teach that. One of the ways we access this power is through the mystery called humility. Is very few people in the body of Christ are truly humble. And it is a weakness in our human nature. It has nothing to do with being good or bad. It is a weakness enshrined in human nature. Do you know why? Because the average person who grew in Africa has been wounded emotionally. We will not admit it. But the average upbringing, the upbringing of the average African is in despair, complex. So when we evolve, the pressure... You see, we mix our weaknesses and limitations with the operation of the, of, of the Holy Spirit and make it look as if he's the one making us behave like that. It's a lie. The character of the Christ has been vetted and proven from Scripture. Are we together now? Yes. So a man who came from a background where he had to struggle to eat, the day he makes his first hundred million, he will rub it on any face he sees. And if that happens to be your face, sorry for you. Are we together? Now, he's rubbing it on your face is as a, a false way of trying to be healed from the limitations of yesterday. The cure is the understanding of your positional advantage. That we are called sons of God is a noble position. No other honor is greater than that. Perhaps if there is any honor that comes close to that, is being called a friend of God. Hmm. Because the advantage of a friend of God is number one, access to the secrets of God. Number two, God will never allow you delve to perdition. He will rather cut short your life. It is the honor as a friend of God. Let's pray. Holy, holy, blessed is he who comes in the name of our God holy holy blessed is he who comes in the name of our God Hosanna Hosanna blessed is he who comes in the name of our God, blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Prayer point number one. Father, the grace to walk in your resurrection power, I receive it right now. Go ahead and pray. Someone is praying. The grace. Shame Saman Lazabaraska Prake Pareko Siabarato Sibes. Grata kaberetas kabalanda shalama si beharyata krakata balaka tavras kabereda bekate branda gal rapedi shana savanda bras kabeledo shalabariata. Go ahead and pray. I desire to walk in your resurrection power. Shaiba da shalantas kafraka tebeleka tebakata. Take a minute to pray. Shabras kaberes kuba shalanda kabariata. Krata kata bereka te braska te breka te beleka ta. Krape kabarantos kodo brende beleka tiata. This is the generation that seeks your face, O God of Jacob. Hallelujah. Please, I want you to lend me just three or five minutes. Pastor Shola, please, can I, um, can I borrow your worshiper to help me sing that song? Sometimes I'm limited by, I think I need to learn Yoruba. Find a Yoruba teacher for me. Hong be mi fo, hong be mi sare, homo lu wambe, lori a ye mi.
praise the name of the Lord hallelujah now please hear me when the Lord Jesus Christ appeared to me among the many things that he would later tell me in my encounter is that the light that came from him to me he said to every nation and every region I will send you to that light that came from me to you there must be someone in that meeting must be someone in that meeting that that same light needs to rest upon and it's a covenant that I've had with God that every time he grants us grace by his mercy to represent him in any capacity I have remained true to that call to allow that light to rest producing faith producing audacity multiplying your kingdom influence and your relevance and like our people sang giving you speed it says and the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah hmm. <laughs> Shale Salanda Barasadas Kadas. Oh, 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 to Deborah's, to Elijah's, to Gideon's, everyone who is part of this prophetic formation, the grace that drives you to the place of prayer, the grace that drives you to the place of consecration, the grace that drives you to the place of revelation, the grace that drives you to the place of faith and audacity, let it come upon you right now. 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 Hear me. Our generation will alter a spectacular display of signs and wonders. Possibilities imported by the Spirit. I'm praying for someone here. Maybe not everyone. But someone here, mantles don't leave the earth to heaven. Where are the mantles that were on Kenneth Hagin? The mantles that were on Smith Wigglesworth, T.L. Osborne. I pray that by mercy, may that grace find someone tonight. May that grace find someone tonight. May that grace find someone tonight. Hear me. For some of us, the factor limiting our becoming is that our spirit man is weak let me pray for you for the spirit of prayer and supplication the grace that quickens men to travel until they evolve like molten from an old weak version of you into a superior version with power may that grace rest on someone's prayer altar may that grace rest on someone's prayer altar i wept for no man was worthy to open the book and unlock the scroll and the elder tapped me and said weep not for the lion of the tribe of judah the root of david has prevailed and i saw a lamb sitting upon a throne as though he had been slain having seven eyes and seven horns whatever that i means to you whatever dimension of revelation you need to come into i'm praying for you may your eyes be open may your eyes be open may your eyes be open hallelujah now please listen the Bible says after four months then comes the harvest 
no matter how sincere a farmer you are the harvest does not happen immediately this is an encouragement for someone who is in the school of the spirit it's taking time for you to become don't rush the process no don't announce yourself when god is still training you don't say somebody i mentored is already doing ministry that is none of your business the nature of your assignment de de defines how long you stay in the school of the spirit we remain students forever but just because you are called does not mean you have been sent no when you are called you are called to jesus then you are sent to the nations you can be genuinely called but not yet sent i'm praying for someone the staying power to remain with god in that training it may be a lonely place the staying power to remain in the cave of adulam esther you will get to the throne but not immediately be patient it took her one year under the mentorship of Haggai, the keeper of the king's virgins i pray for you no matter how long it will take to stay with the spirit until you evolve until you become a witness and a warrior indeed let grace be supplied to you finally hear me there are prophetic worshipers that must arise see let me tell you i truly believe that every grace that visited this place whether invited or not they did not just visit they came to deposit something and to leave notice the kind of people god handpicked you see there were faces i did not see in the bill but they are here i know that we all with humility came to receive but the truth is that there was something you see god knows the grace combinations he placed in every man and god handpicked these graces unique to the needs of the people and sent the people here there is a grace apostle Irene is carrying a grace combination there is a grace combination pastor isaac is carrying pastor sholan his wife carrying minister becker's carrying p daniel's carrying are we together now moses please carrying don't just be conscious it doesn't matter the person preaching no that under this cloud there are some of you that god is taking a little here a little there because the nature of your assignment it, it, it desires certain grace combinations i stand by the privilege of grace and i'm praying that every grace that has stood on this altar including the grace of pastor sam Adeyemi, under this building which is prophetic they said it in the morning the nehemiah anointing the grace that builds we agree as the church of the lord jesus christ that in the mighty name of jesus every grace and god is able to make all grace all grace all grace not some grace the kind of grace needed to walk in the reality of resurrection receive it now so shall it be in the name of jesus I feel guilty for not making an altar call will you spare me one minute pastor okay he's coming to make it okay that's fine praise the name of the lord oh no 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 he, he, he made one before sir but it's okay oh, he, it's oh okay. he's already made one. Yeah, oh no that's fine apostle if you are led to sir, no ethically once i preach i don't rest until i make an altar call for the sake of one person but if he's made it that's fine let me encourage everyone as much as you can by the grace of god i'm lending my voice with pastor shola tomorrow's service please make the sacrifice i'm sure that you will come and announce it and that includes those fallen online fallen by television better is the end of a thing the bible says than the beginning thereof you have endured the finisher's anointing is on you grace to push through to the final session the lord bless you in jesus name